G'day viewers. Well, this video is not about Ray William Johnson, in case the title made anyone think that. I'm actually going to use this video to explore a few ideas about truth and fiction, uh, faith and science, and the sort of disagreements, controversy and arguments that come out of the clash of these two things. Now, the reason for saying 1 plus 1 doesn't equal 3, I'm going to start with a simple, self-evident fact. 1 plus 1 equals 2. You can't logically argue with that. Of course, you can say the opposite of it. A, a moron can disagree with anything. But it's a simple fact. Uh, not emotional. It's completely objective. 1 plus 1 equals 2. But say someone does come along and they want to assert 1 plus 1 equals 4. I don't know why they do that. Maybe a magic bloke in the sky told them this was the case. Or maybe they didn't even speak to the magic bloke in the sky themselves, but they've got a book that they say contains the sacred word of the magic bloke in the sky, as transcribed by his earthly uh, representatives, and the book says 1 plus 1 equals 4. This is despite the fact that any rational person can see the book is nothing but superstitious fairy stories invented centuries ago to scare illiterate goat herders into behaving themselves. Whatever. These people end up getting very loud about their idea that 1 plus 1 equals 4. No amount of objective fact will sway them. The fact that every credible mathematician in the world says they're talking shit doesn't even slow them down. In fact, they trot out someone they call a creation mathematician who says, well, because the magic bloke in the sky created everything, he also created mathematics. So if he says 1 plus 1 equals 4, it must be true, because he's magic. At this point, the actual mathematicians spend a bit of time trying to work out the most polite way to say, shut the fuck up, you ignorant fucking moron. In the meantime, some other people who believe in the magic bloke in the sky go, wow, you know, I think maybe the creation mathematicians are onto something. I've never understood mathematics. I failed every math test in my life. I think that must be because the mathematicians are wrong and the creation mathematicians are right. It never occurs to them that the reason they failed every math test in their life is because they're really fucking stupid. It also never occurs to them the fact that they don't understand mathematics means they should probably shut the fuck up when people who do understand mathematics are talking. Now, inevitably, the cynical politicians get involved. They know it's easier to get ten morons to vote for them than it is to get one smart person to agree with them. Now, these politicians, they had expensive educations at the most prestigious universities in the country. They know creation mathematics is fucking insane. But they also know the yokels love it when they say they've got that down-home feeling and they like these ordinary people, these real people, not these ivory tower eggheads. I think we should put them in their place. Then the suggestion comes that creation mathematics should be part of the school curriculum, should be taught alongside actual mathematics. Because, you know, there's all these people who believe in it. So surely we should teach it because, you know, a bunch of ignorant morons they carry just as much weight as the greatest academic mind who've done centuries of research into the principles of mathematics. It's the same thing. What are you? Are you some sort of elitist? Now, a lot of maths teachers jack up at this idea because creation mathematics is fucking voodoo, not mathematics. And then the weasel politicians go, well, we should teach the controversy. Despite the fact the only controversy is fucking morons with a mindset that belongs in the Middle Ages think they deserve to be taken seriously. Then someone thinks they have the wisdom of Solomon and they go, why don't we have a compromise? Why don't we teach a middle ground between these two extremes? Yes, that would be the right way to go. No, it wouldn't. That's bullshit for two reasons. First, there's only one extreme in an argument like that, and that's the extreme fuckwittery of suggesting that superstition and ignorance has an equal footing with science and academic study. And the second thing is, uh, the two simply aren't equally valid. I'm all for compromise 
when there are two points of view that each have equal validity. But sometimes one answer is right and one answer is wrong. And a compromise is also wrong because there's an answer that's actually right. One plus one will always equal two. One plus one will never equal four. And to compromise and say one plus one equals three is still wrong. Now, obviously, nothing this stupid would happen in real life. I've used comedic exaggeration to illustrate a point. <laughs> Age-old superstition being regarded as seriously as science. Who would do that? But let me just say, the point I'm making is some points of view are right, some are wrong. There are cases where I'll be the first to go for a compromise. Now, despite the way I perform sometimes in these videos, in real life, I'm actually an extremely reasonable person. I'll go out of my way to avoid a fight. I'll go out of my way to find any viable compromise. But sometimes, you know, like when you're dealing with science versus superstition, there's no compromise. There's right and wrong. And if you're the sort of fuckwit who wants to push wrong because you think your point of view is just as valid as an informed point of view when you are an ignorant fucking moron I will bring the fight I will not back down and I kinda know there are people out there who like to watch me doing that so stay tuned